G'day folks, welcome to a nice little uh, Thursday afternoon video. Now, we all know that things like uh, high pressure air, high pressure gases, um, just general high, high energy store, or stored energy is generally dangerous, whether it's small arms ammunition, mining explosives, high current energy from batteries, the mains power, that kind of thing, um, welding gases, combustibles, gasoline, that sort of stuff. We all... What are you doing, dog? Playing with the airline. Speaking of playing with dangerous high-pressure stuff, the thing we're going to look at today is called the Widowmaker. Well, a lot of a lot of things earn the nickname the Widowmaker because, well, they're dangerous and are known for killing people, be them wooden step ladders and dodgy old old-style power tools, but here's something you still see used and still available on new vehicles today. The two-piece split rim. And I'm, when I say split rim, I don't mean the bolt together kind, which are quite safe uh, and generally used for bead locking, that kind of thing, off road, where you're running at almost no pressure uh, or military military use. This is just a standard circlip style two piece rim. And the reason they're called the Widowmaker, well, that sort of goes back on what I was just saying about compressed air. It is a lot of stored energy. What are you doing? Don't eat that. See, this is going to make my life challenging, aren't you? <laughs> right. Yeah, it goes back on what I was saying about compressed gases. A slow release of compressed gas is pretty much harmless. However, a very rapid release will take your arms and legs off. It's like getting hit by a truck. So if one of these things fails, it will generally either knock you out and throw you across the shop or it will kill you. There's not a lot of... It, it, it'll really ruin your day, or at least ruin your life. I mean, having a car tyre or a bicycle tyre fail is one thing. Having one of these fail at, at like 90 PSI is bad. Really bad. So, I'm going to show you exactly why this that can occur. Okay, so, on most modern vehicles, if not all of them now, this is what you'll find. A single piece rolled or spun or cast metal wheel that you have to actually stretch or fit the tyre beads over to well, get the tyre on there and then they snap out over this safety lip to create a seal. That's called a tubeless rim. Extremely common, well, it's pretty much the norm everywhere. Even light trucks like this has been superseded by tubeless wheels. But the reason for a two-piece is when you have such a thick tyre, such a stiff tyre that you can't physically fit it onto anything else. Like, you can't physically stretch it over this lip. And I, don't, I shouldn't use the term stretch because the bead doesn't stretch. You simply have to get it hooked in here and push it over so it can ride up on the lip and then snap into place. So the reason for this was generally that tyres were too hard to get onto a tubeless rim. You simply couldn't do it. Nowadays, the only advantage to this is ease of service in the field and the fact that you can fit really thick tyres for outback and agricultural use. So this is a standard 13 inch car rim and it's got safety beads to prevent the bead from slipping off under low pressure. This does not and it does not require an inner tube. You can fit an inner tube if absolutely necessary. I don't recommend it but if it gets you a little more life out of your tyre because you've got a tiny pinhole or something in the shoulder, no real serious harm. I mean my RAV4 has one or two for that reason because I got tangled up in some barbed wire on a farm hunting trip one day and uh, a couple of tiny pinholes kind of ruins your day. Well. It took a couple of days for them to go down, but uh, yeah, you take your chances. You put them, on, put them on the rear of the vehicle. The other kind are like this. This is a piece of old equipment that I picked up recently, or today. You can see there are two sets of wheel nuts. The inner ones hold the wheel on. These ones actually hold the two halves together. These are safe as long as you do not take these off at the same time as these. These can also cause serious harm or death if you make the mistake of taking all the nuts off at once. Only take the inner ones off. <laughs> Trust me, don't take the outer ones out until you, at least until the tyre is deflated. If in doubt, take the valve out. That's what I say, just take the valve out, even if you know it's punctured and it's flat, just take the valve out anyway. Safety 101. Now this thing, this is another thing altogether. It's an old design, very, very old design, still relevant, still used in many countries like Africa, the Middle East, uh, the Taliban taxis, the Toyota Land Cruiser uh, troop carriers quite often come with these. You can still buy them from the factory today in Australia 
with 16 inch, 16 by 7.5 split rims, basically this configuration. 7.5, 16 light truck. Uh, this has steel reinforced sidewalls too, so it's incredibly stiff, can handle a lot of load, and uh, that's sort of the idea. Yeah, test inflation pressure is 100 psi. You can run these about 90 to 100, even more. So, yeah, high pressure, lots of energy. What could possibly go wrong? Well, I'll show you. Okay, so how this essentially works is you, rather than a bolt-on assembly, you've got essentially a big circlip with a big L shape on it. They're not, I guess, yeah, it, it's not dissimilar to a big circlip. As you can see, it moves. And I can pull it out like so. As you can see, it engages into a, a groove in this rim. That's pretty much it. That's out. Put that aside and just take the rest of it apart. rim band to keep the rust off the tube. So you have to have one of them. Again, it's just to keep corrosion, dirt, that kind of thing from eating the inner tube. And an inner tube. So a lot more complicated than the modern equivalent. Which is why these are pretty much obsolete. Get rid of that, we don't need them anymore. Okay, so what we've got here is basically the, the strip rim assembly. Strip, that is, not split. Well, it's split and stripped. <laughs> and what you can see, there's a big step here, a land. You got, a, you got a mounting land here for the bead, but there isn't one here. So that's because it's on the retainer, on there. So the bead mounts on this surface here, pushes up against this lip, and you can see there's a bit of a little protrusion on there, kind of like a big circlip. And that has to lock in here positively. Now, this has to be kept clean. You get a bit of a wire brush, a bit of wire wool, whatever, clean all the rust and dirt out of it and use lots of fitting lube or hot, just dish soap or whatever, anything. Lube these surfaces up when mounting and you're pretty much guaranteed to mount it properly. Now, if you let a lot of dirt and crap get in here or it's damaged or for whatever reason this doesn't lock in properly, as you're inflating it, basically what happens is one edge of this will start to creep out and up. So once you reach a critical pressure, it just unwinds itself like it did when I pulled on it and just goes flying with a ridiculous amount of force. So that's why they call them the Widowmaker. A lot of guys will stand on top of them or in front of them or over them and this thing comes flying up and absolutely creams them. Or it hits the ceiling and comes down and hits them on the head or whatever. It's bad. So you either put them inside a, a vertical cage, so if it blows out, the cage contains the flying rim and retainer or you take some like not big nice high tensile chain and wrap it through the center of the rim and around the tire not tight but in two places so if this thing does launch it's retained by chains so it'll go bang it'll destroy your tube and your rim liner and everything but this doesn't go flying like a missile so there's two options chain them or cage them i don't recommend inflating them to any reasonable pressure outside of that 
I mean, I've had this on and off a couple of times practicing. I've only inflated it to about 15, 20 PSI just to get the beads to pop up. Wouldn't go any further than that without a cage. But yeah, the reason they call these the Widowmaker is because of this interface here. If you don't get that right, she's going to come apart on you. Whether you've got the retainer pushed too far down, it's pushed down here, you'll see a much bigger gap between the ends and you'll probably, the bead will start to seat onto it, but eventually it's going to break loose and go thunk and come up and it'll probably out accelerate its ability to snap into that groove and just override the groove and go flying. So either you've got one end, one end poking up not seated properly or it's pushed down too far and it's sitting down here so it's just going to go bang and override this, over, override this lip and uh, yeah by that point you're in serious trouble. It's like the old tire fitters used to tell me 30 psi will ruin your day. 100 PSI will ruin your life. But I don't recommend anyone mess with these things unless you're really desperate or know what you're doing. Because again, if the shit ever hits the fan and you're out in the middle of nowhere trying to survive, it's worth knowing how to fit and repair these things because I guarantee you'll find them. Guarantee it. And again, the tyre itself is pretty straightforward. You've got the standard beads, steel sidewall construction, they're fairly uh, robust. This one's all scalloped to hell, it's got lots of flat spots worn in it. It's trash. It's got to be scrapped. But yeah, I'm not going to go into the finer details of like fixing inner tubes and things. A lot of people know how to do that, but uh, the main thing is this beat, this retainer. You got to get this end started. With the tire on, it's even harder, but you got to get this end started, hooked in, and then just basically take a nylon hammer and knock it down until it snaps into place. Now, if we want to talk manufacturing advantages before we go any further, single piece rims are really good in, what, in many ways. Not just because it's only one piece to manufacture and put together in service. You don't need a rim band, you don't need a tube. So it's a bit easier that way and a lot cheaper. But it's also a lot safer because, well, anyone who's ridden a bicycle with inner tubes or vehicle with, that runs tubes knows once you get a cut or a hole in this, there's nothing stopping the air from getting in between the tyre and then you've got this big hole for it to all get out of. So even a tiny little pinhole, like a nail hole, that would normally take a week or so to become obvious, it only takes 10, 15 minutes, maybe even less, maybe a minute to become very obvious and you've got a flat tyre. So these are, aren't just redundant because of the dangers of these rims and the expense of manufacturing. They're redundant because they're just not safe. Not by today's standards. So yeah, just a little bit of info on that because you can still use tubes admittedly i still have a couple in service but again rear axle only and those tires are old and going to get replaced in the in the new year anyway so uh yeah let's move on actually need a bigger hammer than that. <laughs> it's easier with the tyre on because the bead sort of helps push it in but you can sort of see the idea there. It just sort of coils itself in, locks into that groove and you're done. So yeah, the technology hasn't changed much over the years. This dates back over a hundred years. It's a very old design but it's tried true and it works. And again, that's just to get the tyre lever in to peel it off in the first place. I'm probably putting this on the wrong way around, back to front. And yeah, that is why they call them the Widowmaker. Always be wary of high pressure air and gases, that kind of thing. Doesn't matter what they're in. If it's stored energy, chances are if you use it wrong, it'll hurt you. Or kill you, either way. Better to get hurt than killed, but still, better to uh, even better to just not get, end up in that situation at all. Anyway, that's all for now, and uh, thanks for watching. Okay.
one last thing I should also point out that uh, once this is fully seated properly in the rim because these beads cannot stretch there's no way for this to unmount itself it can't come out again it's just getting that initial seating done right where the bead fully seats up against the inside of this lip and you're pretty much done like they're perfectly safe when used properly but you don't mount them properly and you've got the thing partly like partly dismounted like this and you start pumping it up to 100 psi this is all going to come flying out yeah you'll see that that and parts of the tube just explode out in your face and you're gonna have a really bad time so uh yeah be very very careful thanks for watching